Everyone loves a good rags to riches story. Jeff Bezos isn't exactly the most popular billionaire alive today. Bezos' parents really, really weren't ready for a child. They were 17 and 19 years old when he was born. He spent most of his childhood doing manual labor on his grandparents' ranch. In high school, he even worked at McDonald's. After college, Bezos noticed that that whole internet fad was actually growing pretty fast. He decided to start an online bookstore called Amazon.com that would eventually become the biggest company in the world. Despite how huge Amazon became, Bezos still held on to his high school dream of sending people to space. He started Blue Origin and actually became a commercial astronaut himself. By far the strangest thing Bezos or anyone else in the entire world has ever bought was his giant clock, the clock of the long now. While that's a cool idea, it's definitely not one that's worth $42 million. That's more than half what he paid for his $78 million island. While Elon Musk was born into a wealthy family in South Africa before launching Tesla Motors, Jobs wasn't quite so lucky. His biological parents actually gave him up for adoption. He was taken in by Paul Jobs, a mechanic, and Clara Jobs, an accountant. Their adopted son showed signs of his legendary moxie when he dropped out of college in order to become an entrepreneur. While you might think his entire journey was all the kinds of success Apple sees now, the company jumped from failure to failure to failure, eventually to the point where they fired Steve Jobs. Once he came back though, he brought the company to the legendary status it has today. The iMac, iPod, and iPhone all revolutionized technology around the world. As impressive as all that is, my favorite of his contributions is still Pixar. At the end of his life, he was worth $10.2 billion. Mark Cuban is so rich today that he's literally the most famous rich person on a show about rich people helping other people become rich people. His grandparents were immigrants from Russia who arrived literally on Ellis Island. He came from a working class family but showed signs of an entrepreneur's spirit early on. His first business was actually reselling baseball cards, stamps, and coins. Eventually he joined the team at Broadcast.com and made it such a success that it was acquired by Yahoo for $5.7 billion in stock. He's gone on to invest in dozens of businesses and even purchased the Dallas Mavericks professional basketball team for $285 million. Today Cuban is the shark of sharks with a sizable net worth of $4.6 billion. Tyler Perry may be a massive success today, but his life was anything but successful at the start. He was born to a low-income family in New Orleans. His father was so abusive that Tyler literally changed his name to Perry in order to distance himself after watching an interview on the Oprah Winfrey show that showed that writing can be therapeutic, he began writing plays. He then moved to Atlanta where he got to work slowly building his career. Things really took off when he created his Medea character. It led to several big movies which led to Perry starting his own production company and becoming a full-fledged mogul. The first movie to film at Perry's studio was the massive MCU hit Black Panther. Today, Perry is worth just over a billion dollars, which would have been astounding to his younger self's struggling theater days. Oprah began her life as part of a small, poor family in rural Mississippi. From those impoverished beginnings, she got a scholarship to Tennessee State University, where she became a news correspondent at 19 years old. She then moved to Chicago, where she eventually started her own talk show. You know it, the Oprah Winfrey Show. It ran for 25 years and led to her also starting her own magazine. She was the richest African American of the 20th century and was dubbed the Queen of Media. So how rich is Oprah exactly? Well, her most recent projected net worth is around 2.5 billion. 